Hey YouTube, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. This is Matthew with the Counselors Guild, and today we'll be doing a book review called The Marshmallow Test. This book is uh, written by Walter Michel, and we'll start with him. Uh, he was born February 22nd, 1930 in Vienna, Austria. He received a PhD in clinical psych from Ohio State in 56. He spent most of his time as a professor in Stanford, Columbia University, researching The Marshmallow Test. Uh, author of more than 200 scientific papers, author of the textbook Introduction to Personality, and his main focus was on delayed gratification and in personality theory. Uh, he passed away back, I think, in 2018. Uh, he's no longer with us, but he did a lot of research with delayed gratification and brought us his book, The Marshmallow Test. The book took char characteristics. Uh, it's 282 pages. It's not too long, it's not too bad, not very dense, it's a good read, and it's very easy. Uh, I would say if you are in grad school, definitely midway through undergrad, you can get it. Uh, if you are a grad, PhD, um, licensed, definitely. Uh, it has a lot of bio psych in it. Uh, it's very CBT oriented. So if you're into that, check it out. Very good. Uh, I recommend it. Uh, it has three three parts, 20 chapters, uh, introduction, acknowledgments, notes, and index. Difficulty rating, on a, on a scale of 10, I gave it a 4. It's not very difficult at all. But I think you would benefit from knowing some of the basic understandings of psychology, neurology, biology, that type of thing. So make sure you got uh, at least a biopsych course uh, done with. So the marshmallow test, what is it? Well, it started in 1960 at Stanford University, Bing Nursery School. Uh, Walter wanted to study delayed gratification. Uh, Walter, Michelle, and his students gave children the chance to receive a reward, one marshmallow, right away, or they could receive two if they waited 20 minutes. Michelle and the students studied the techniques the children used to delay gratification for the bigger rewards the if and when of these techniques were mostly examined. Um, so they looked at what the kids did. Oh, they have to wait. Mm, what do they do? Did they think of a story in their head? You know, this is what they wanted to, to see, how the kids were able to keep themselves from taking uh, uh, taking their bigger, bigger reward. Uh, he examined nature, nurture side of delayed gratification. You know, this is a longitudinal study. Uh, he looked at, you know, you know, how they're raised, where they're born, uh, the type of environment they're raised in. Uh, he looked at um, later on in life, they looked at how the, the, the people that fared were able to, um, I think I remember them talking about how the people that fared better on the marshmallow test did better in life. Um, so it, it, it's all in the book. It's really good. You'll see all that. Examined longitudinal studies, they looked at how these children fared better later in life. So, the ones that weren't able to do it, the ones that had couldn't delay gratification, they ended up being uh, worse off, you know, as far as uh, money, uh, career, family, that type of thing. They looked at those type of variables. The hot and cold system. So this is uh, this is Michelle's. This is what he did a lot of research on. Um, this is Michelle's baby big part of the book is the hot and cold system. So the hot system is uh, the first uh, attempting appetitive, appetitive uh, stimulus has a consuming, arousing, motivating quality. Second, it also provides descriptive cues that give information about a non-emotional cognitive feature. It's round, white, thick, soft, edible. So the effect the stimulus has on us depends on how we represent it mentally. The hot focus automatically triggers the impulsive reaction. So hot is something we want. Sugar, you know, sweets, carbs, um, you know, food. Uh, you can go any, you know, if you're into coffee, um, you know, cigarettes, anything that, that can trigger that hot system, it's harder to delay. Uh, it, it acts almost automatically um, to the stimulus. The cold system, now this is his, his, his way of saying, okay, the cold system is going to come in, it's going to cool things out, so you're able to make a better decision. Uh, a cool representation, in contrast, so instead of looking at the marshmallow and saying, ooh, that looks you know, white, round, soft, 
Um, maybe you start thinking about how it tastes, chewing on it. Uh, you got to have that cold system come in and, and kind of bring things down so you're not so impulsive or, uh, to it. Um, so it focuses on the abstract. Cognitive informational aspects of the stimulus and tells you what it is like without making it more tempting. It allows you to think cool about it rather than just grab it. The hotter and more salient the, the desire of reward, the more difficult it is to cool uh, the impulsive reaction to it. The power is not in the stimulus, however, but in how it is mentally appraised. So there's where a lot of the cognitive stuff comes in at. How we appraise things depends on if it's hot or cold. If you change how you think about it, its impact on how you feel uh, and do changes. It's important to note that high stress attenuates the cool system and accentuates accentuates the hot system. It talks about the accentuate and attenuates. Um, one goes up, the other one goes down. So if you can do, you know, repeatedly use that cold system to bring, you know, that'll go up, that becomes stronger. The uh, the accentuate would would go down. Um, did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the high and cool systems continuously and seamlessly interact in a reciprocal relationship. As one becomes more active, the other becomes less active. Okay, that's the whole high and cool system. That is Walter Michel's um, theory, his idea. That's what he did a lot of research on. So this is my kind of uh, way of explaining things: the limbic systems, the hot system versus versus the executive functioning, which is the cold. And this is in the book too. Um, so, if you look at this, we got uh, a boxing match between Fred Flintstone there, and we have Albert Einstein uh, in the other corner there. We got a box of donuts in the middle. So, just imagine a uh, box of donuts is presented to you. Now, Fred Flintstone, the, the, the thing about Fred is he's amped up on amphetamines, so he's really quick, really fast. You know, the limbic system works really fast. And he's kind of the reigning champ for like millions of years. So um, you got quite a struggle with him. But over here, Albert, the executive functioning, you know, he's kind of slow. Um, however, the thing about Albert is when he punches, he's more likely to land his punches. Okay? Fred Flintstone, he's just, you know, you know, just wailing, throwing haymakers just all over the place, not really thinking things through. He's just going real quick. Um, so if the box of donuts is thrown in there, Fred Flintstone has the upper hand until you use that executive function, use that Albert Einstein uh, uh, part of your brain to think things through. Do I really need this box of donut? You know, this donut. You know, I can. The hot is like telling me, yeah, this is gonna be um, sweet. I know exactly how it's gonna taste. It melts my mouth. It's so good. Ooh, look at the chocolate. You know, you can, you can almost taste it. Um, though, if I'm thinking that way, I'm just I'm gonna go ahead and grab one, two, three, maybe four, uh, and b before I even regret it, I'm, they're they're done and over with. Before I even think about it, they're they're eaten. It's over. Um, however, if we get the executive functioning part, you know, I mean, do we really need this? It's a bunch of sugar. You know, I don't need this to survive. It's not something I need. Uh, I'm trying to look good. You know, I'm trying to look like. The Rock, would the Rock eat these donuts? Probably not. You know, again, you use these different techniques, and this is what he studied uh, with the kids doing, and he showed how people delayed gratification and a lot of the tricks that people use. So uh, that's the limbic system. Um, you know, that's the old part of our brain, uh, emotional part of our brain. It doesn't really think things through. It just acts on emotion and very impulsive. Executive functioning, of course, is the newer part of the brain up in the front here. Um, and that allows us to, you know, weigh the risk and benefits. You know, should I, shouldn't I? Um, so the more we get the executive functioning out in there, the better decisions we'll make. Okay. Part two. Uh, so there's three parts of that book. Part two is from marshmallows to money in 401k. Executive function. Uh, these are the cognitive skills that let us exert deliberate, conscious control of thoughts, impulses, actions, and emotions. Okay, Einstein. EF gives us the freedom to inhibit the, and cool impulsive urges and to think and deploy attention flexibly in ways that lets us pursue and reach our goals. Each child who waited successfully had a distinctive methodology for self-control. 
but they all shared three features of EF. And this is in the book. This is straight from the shell. First, they had to remember and actively keep in mind their chosen goal and the contingency. You gotta have a goal. What am I working towards? Am I trying to lose weight, trying to quit smoking, work out more, just be healthier? You know, you can, that way you have something to resort, uh, resort back to. I'm not just doing things, you know, to do them. You know, I, I have somewhere where I want to be. Second, they had to monitor their progress towards their goal and make the necessary corrections by shifting their attention and cognitive flexibly between goal-oriented thoughts and temptation-reducing techniques. Third, they had to inhibit impulsive responses like thinking about how appealing and temptations the temptations were or reaching out to touch them that would prevent them from attaining their goal so you need those three things so if you are trying to stop you know maybe overeating or trying to cut carbs or you're trying to quit smoking vaping um you know any, any of those addictive type things you know you got to have a goal okay you got to monitor your progress make necessary corrections you know everybody everybody has their bumps in the road the roadblocks but you got to keep going, monitor your progress, and you uh, you have to inhibit the responses uh, on how you think about it. You have to think cold thoughts about those things that you're addicted to. Okay. You got to cognitively reappraise those things. You know, cigarette. Mm, you know, how do I reappraise that? You know, how do I um, look at that? You got to look at it negatively think about smoking and he brings this up in the book is the the um, repercussions for smoking are years away it's not in the now so you don't really think about all the cold stuff you just think about the hot stuff uh, when it comes to smoking so same thing with eating i mean you don't you don't gain 20 pounds over you know an hour i mean unless you eat eat that <laughs> um so it's usually down the road uh so those those hot um system can come in and work their magic and make you eat more or smoke and and your cold thoughts are just not there because it's so future in the future um so anyway uh so he goes over these three these three uh things that you need to have uh, ef imagination and empathy ef allows us to get beyond uh the immediate situation and the here and now so again most repercussions are in the future ef our executive functioning brain knows that if you quit, if you continue smoking, lung cancer, uh, uh, COPD, you know all those things on, on the little side of the pack that tells you, um, you can get those. You know you're not immune to those. Um, so you gotta have your EF come in and remind you that hey, you know, you know it may be down the road and maybe 20 years from now, but you know you're putting your life at risk. Um, so, so think, fantasize outside the box, or imagine the impossible. EF allows us to understand and take into account the feelings, motivations, and actions of others and recognize that their perceptions and reactions may be quite different than ours. So if you're, if you're somebody who maybe gets angry and, and uh, makes comments that are mean, uh, this might be something that, that would help you be more empathetic. You know, if, I, if somebody told me that, how would I feel? Just kind of making you more empathetic to help you control uh, making rude comments or uh, maybe saying things out of anger. Uh, it helps us grasp what others may think or intend and let us empathize with what they are experiencing. Uh, so it allows us to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Part three, from lab to life. This is all in the book. Uh, I recommend getting it if you are interested. Um, I, I work with boys. Um, in, in my practice and it's it, it really um, hit home for me like I really I see this uh, and a lot of boys have problems with um, um, I can't think of delay gratification there it is um, and empathy too so. enhancing EF can involve physical exercise even moderate amounts uh, and over short periods of time and virtually anything that minimizes loneliness provides social support and strengthens the individual ties and connectedness to other people. Self-control is divided into two types of self-discipline. The ability to keep goals in mind and stay focused on what when working and the ability to control temper and frustration upsetting interpersonal situations. You know, 
So, again, what we said earlier, stress attenuates the cold system and accentuates the hot system. So if you're under stress, you're more likely to give in to uh, your impulses. You're more likely to reach those donuts, those cigarettes. Um, so it's important to have a good social network and manage stress uh, in a better way. However you manage stress without using drugs or alcohol or food. Regardless of age, the core strategy for self-control is to cool the now and heat the later. Push the temptation in front of you, uh, in front of you as f uh, far away in space and time, and bring the distant consequences closer to mind. So heat up those distant uh, side effects or repercussions. You know, heat those lung cancer, heat those weight gains, heat those um, diabetes. You know, heat all that up. You know. And, and that way, when you see those, your instant thought is, oh, cancer, oh, fat, oh, diabetes, oh, um, I don't know, if, you're, if you have like an anger problem or something like that, oh, that's going to lead to an argument or something like that. You know, it, it's, it's heating up the future um, repercussions of your behavior. To master self-control, you have to... Uh, we have to instruct ourselves, and that won't happen naturally because in the face of temptations, the hot system dominates. It discounts delayed gratifications, it activates faster than a cool system, and accelerates the cool function. I'm sorry, as it accelerates, the cool system attenuates. The dominance of the hot system might have served our ancestors well in the wild, but it drives us to a default reflex of giving in to temptations, making it easy for smart people to behave stupidly. Oops. Conclusion. That was the three parts. Uh, he goes into, uh, the first part is a lot of his background uh, studies. He goes into more of the uh, limbic system stuff. Second part is more EF. And then third part is how does this apply? Um, how do you apply this to your life? Uh, how, you know, that type of thing. So, it's a very good book. Uh, like I said here at the top, it's a very easy read. The concepts are easily understood. The explanations and research are very clear. You won't, I mean, unless you are picking up this book and have no idea what, what, what you know, uh, without any kind of, I think, background knowledge, you're going to struggle a little bit or you, you may not know what he's talking about. Comprehensive, uh, it, it, and I say that because he talks about biology. Psychology, neurology, evolutionary and developmental side of con, uh, self control. Um, it is more cognitive behavioral oriented, um, I think. Uh, he doesn't talk about um, like anything like psychoanalytic or anything like that. It is enjoyable. Yeah, it kept me engaged. I didn't feel like I was just working through the book. Uh, really interested to me. Uh, I, I really liked it. I learned a lot, and it was worth my time. Very good book, very easy read. If you have a weekend or a week uh, and you're wanting to expand your knowledge, this is something you might want to pick up. Self-control, delayed gratification is a huge part of human behavior. And if you're looking to learn more about why people decide to do what they want to do, this may help you. This may answer a lot of those questions for you. Um, I think that was it. Yep, that's it. Um, but that's all I have. Good book. Pick it up. You won't regret it. Uh, please subscribe. Please like. Give me a comment if you've read the book already. Let me know how you, you know, what you liked about it or didn't like about it. Uh, but that is all I have today, guys. You have a great day. Uh, and uh, stay safe out there. All right, bye.